Come on, talk. It's been a long day. <laughs> Welcome back to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Nice to see you. You disappeared for ages. We're at the NEC at the Motorhome and Caravan Show 2022. And you've been off recording and videoing and meeting stars and all the rest of it. <laughs> I did get recognised quite a lot. It was lovely to meet some of our listeners. It's great, isn't it? Because we have no idea who's actually listening to us ramble on. And uh, it's really lovely to meet people. And they've been so encouraging. Apparently, some of the stuff we've said has been helpful. So that's good. <laughs> some of the stuff that's come back has been quite uh, amazing. We did mention actually doing a calendar. And people have been asking for copies of the Motorhome Matt calendar. Not again. Really? You're incorrigible. We're not <laughs> doing a naked calendar. It's not happening. <laughs> it won't be naked, don't worry. I've been down the underwear shop for you. You're going to look fantastic. <laughs> So, what's it been like at the show? It's been very busy. I've nearly lost my voice. Uh, it's, it's been brilliant. Really, really enjoyable. This has been new for us, bringing the podcast to a show. Uh, it's the first time we've done it. And I think we've hit a spot with lots of our listeners. Uh, and it's been, as I say, lovely to meet them. Uh, lovely to meet some of our industry friends as well, who've also been listening, it seems. Um, and have also been very complimentary. So, yeah, I'm feeling, feeling good. Um, I think we should carry on doing it. What do you think? Uh, well, it's up to you. You're the boss. I, but I, I think we should too. But lots of people coming up. Uh, it's nice to get recognised at a show like this. Oh, you're that bloke. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're with Matt. Yeah, Sims. Yeah, him. Yeah, that's the one. He's the expert. You ask the stupid questions. That's what they say. Yeah, though they're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you said you were feeling good. You're not feeling that good because you've been drinking toilet fluid oh dear yeah i am i have <laughs> had a mouthful of toilet chemical don't ever drink toilet chemical honestly we've just been onto a, a, a wholesaler stand and uh, there's a new product coming out now that um is well harmless to humans so i thought really can you drink it and the salesman said well i guess so so i took a swig <laughs> yeah it doesn't taste good at all it tastes like essential oils so my mouth tastes like gastro gastro gtx at the moment <laughs> Lovely. And nice to that little uh, mention that there are other oils available. Of course. Synthetic, yes. uh, obviously. You're looking a bit drawn and haggard. Is that just tired or is that the toilet fluid uh, making itself <laughs> felt? I think that's just my age. It's been a, it's been a long paper round this week, I tell you. <laughs> You're looking a bit flushed. <laughs> ba <Ba-bum>. uh, <laughs> Where is next holiday? The Greek island of Domestos? Oh, stop it. <laughs> Get the bell. Ding, ding. <laughs> Okay, what we're doing in this podcast is answering your questions. You've been writing in with them, emailing them and leaving them, recording them uh, here at the show. And that's fantastic. And thank you so much. So let's have question number one, shall we? Right, hello. Um, My name's Sarah. Just um, asking, I've got a van conversion with solar panels. Thinking about winterisation, what's the best thing to do um, if... Do you just leave it open to the elements? Is it best to cover them and hydrogen them and all those sort of things? Thank you. So that's Sarah winterising her solar panels. Thanks for your question, Sarah. That's recorded at the stand. Thanks for visiting. So what do I need to do to them to winterise them? Well, I guess you don't really necessarily need to do anything to them. I think if they're at risk of being damaged from something falling out of the sky or from above them, you know, parking it under a conker tree is probably not a good idea, and then it's probably worth covering them up. But if you're reliant on them through the winter to keep the batteries charged, then just regularly give them a clean, any dust and bird lime or whatever, you know, tree sap has got on them just clean that off and then they'll keep functioning and hopefully keep your batteries topped up you've got solar panels at home you don't do anything with yours do you i have them at home and people keep on contacting me by telephone unwanted callers saying i will come and clean your solar panels they've never been cleaned in 11 years we just rely on the rain falling on them and they're fine they're great and you know when you look at the inverter we're still generating 4.2k which is the maximum a home is allowed to generate so I mean, what do you have to do, Sarah, to be honest with you? A squeegee, maybe, the first time you take it out uh, after a long winter? Yeah, certainly. If you're reliant on them keeping batteries topped up and charged, then clean them through the winter. But definitely before you use the van again in the spring, 
assuming that's the first time, then yeah, giving them a wipe down is a good idea. You're one of those people, aren't you, that's got solar and just loves all the tech about it. Honestly, everyone I know that's got solar panels on the roof goes on and on and on about maximum power consumption. You love it, don't you? I do love it, yeah. Do you want to see the app? I've got it on the phone. I know exactly at home now, even though I'm in Birmingham, exactly what's happening at my house about 100 miles away. Uh, OK, thank you, Sarah. And she left that uh, question at the Got A Question Ask Matt stand on the motorhome Matt stand. Uh, is it 9.3 we're on? 9 point... I don't know. 9.32. 9.32. You come in, entrance number nine at the show, and we're right in front you of you. Can't miss us. Yeah. Bright orange. Yeah. So, come and grab a free bag. <laughs> yeah, grab a free bag. Free bag. Yeah, and also uh, leave a, a question. So, thanks, Sarah. Okay, question number two comes from Lynn Wellsby. Hi, Matt. My question. Oh, hi, Matt. My question for you is: Where's the best place to put a smoke alarm? And the CO2. Thank you. So was that where's the best place to put a smoke alarm? Definitely in the ceiling of the motorhome. It'd be a good start. Uh, and I would say close to the sleeping area is a good idea uh, because you want it to wake you up, make sure it wakes you up. So I would say anywhere between the escape route and the sleeping area would be a sensible place. Okay, here's one from Mike. Uh, his um, surname is Plows. He's left his surname, Mike Plows. Thanks, Mike. Uh, he's written this one. Uh, what's the best Wi-Fi for a motorhome? Now, you've been doing a bit of that the last couple yeah. of days. This has been a hot topic this week, definitely. Uh, and I've been doing some research uh, on this. Uh, so I'd say, Mike, it really depends. Your question needs a bit more fleshing out, really, on how you're going to use it and where. So if you just want to watch a bit of television in the highlands of Scotland, you're only going to be able to gain access to one cellular cell. Uh, and uh, a Cat4 Wi-Fi device can only grab hold of one cell at a time. However, if you're going to be in London or Birmingham, Bristol, Manchester, a big city, uh, anywhere, and you want to stream or you want to work and you've got a Cat4 Wi-Fi device, it still is only going to grab hold of that one cell uh, and you might want to be grabbing hold of more. So a Cat22 wireless device will grab hold of seven. So let me put this in layman terms. If you imagine you've got a bucket of water and that's your internet and you've got one straw, that's a Cat4 device. You can suck that water out of the bucket. It's going to take you ages to get the water out. And also if the straw breaks, i.e. you lose the cell, you lose your internet. If you've got a Cat22 device, you've got seven straws, you suck the same amount, you get a lot more water in your mouth, so you can get much bigger bandwidth. And also, if one of the cells drops out, you're still going to get internet. And that's why sometimes your mobile phone, which if it's a modern iPhone, they're Cat22, they're often quicker and get better internet than your Wi-Fi at home. Where I live, our broadband at home is rubbish because we live very remotely, and often our mobiles on 4G are, are much faster. Um, so I would say it depends where you're going to use it. In, in the middle of the Cairngorms, assuming you get any network, there probably only is one cell available. So a Cat4 device is fine. But if, if you really want to rely on getting signal and there is more than one cell available, then a Cat22 device is the, currently the highest uh, cell-grabbing device you can get. That's going to grab up to seven. So that's going to be faster and more reliable. Does that help? It sort of helps, yeah. So for your Wi-Fi, you get a bucket, you suck the water out with seven <laughs> straws, and then you'll be fine. It's not, it's not a problem. It's a toilet chemical. It's, it's having an effect. <laughs> it is. He's smashing the cistern. Uh, OK, then. Let's have a, oh, by the way, talking of all those cities, you were listing the cities. One you didn't mention was Belfast. And uh, talking to people uh, today, there was uh, two flights in uh, to Birmingham this morning carrying people just for the show. And the, the, they came in this morning. They're going home tonight. Yeah, we met some of them as well, didn't we? Yeah, it's great. People come to this show. Well, they come to it from all over Europe. And, of course, there's lots of exhibitors are here from Europe as well. We met Andrea from Germany uh, working for Heimer. Um, we met people from Tula coming here from Sweden. Uh, Graham and his team are here just for the week. So it's an international show, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And Pontypool as well. We had a big <laughs> fan from Pontypool, but as Wales, got to mention it. <laughs> it's another country. It counts. <laughs> it does. OK, uh, Marcel Batson-Warner has asked a question. Yeah. Hello, Matt. This is Marcel Batson-Warner. Uh, I've 
this is Marcel and I've got a question for you relating to motorhomes um, but specifically electric powered motorhomes. I know this is um, new in this space but I'm interested to hear more about what I can expect from an uh, electric motorhome. There's the can of worms opened again, <laughs> electric motorhomes. Now, you, you are getting together with a big pal of yours uh, to put together uh, a van conversion, aren't you? Uh, electric to see whether it can be done. But that's the big question everybody's asking at the show uh, this weekend. Electric motorhomes, fact or fiction? Well, Marcel, yeah, I'm with you. What can we expect to see? That's a really good question. So, Bursner built electric motorhome uh, when they did it they took all the batteries off and fitted it out and then put the batteries back on because you just can't risk you know drilling through the floor uh, and causing damage I mean camper vans are they're starting to appear smaller vehicles it's a, it's a hot topic and so many questions and yes we have bought an electric van which we're going to convert into a camper van it may not be all electric it might have a gas hob um, I think the issue at the moment is this rule is coming in that 2030 all new vehicles have to be hybrid, not pure electric, but hybrid. Um, and we just don't know what impact that's going to have on the motorhome industry. Potentially, if that happens, it's a government ruling, so anything could change. <laughs> in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or sooner. Um, it, potentially, if, if the rule sticks, then we could see a short in the supply of chassis to the motorhome industry and there won't be new chassis to buy you know new motorhomes to buy potentially which will mean that used vehicles you know continue to stay strong in value um, so I mean obviously hybrid is a different kettle of fish altogether uh, I had a really good conversation with the AA recently someone very senior at the AA and we, I was at the tow show which is a show that exhibits roll, um, which is a show that exhibits recovery trucks. Now these are huge, great things. These are, you know, they have cranes on them. They lift. Uh, there's a friend of mine walking by. They lift trucks out of ditches at the side of the motorway. Um, Not much of a friend if they walk by. He kept going. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame him. He might end up on the end of this mic. Uh, yeah, they lift. They lift trucks that have gone off the motorway and crashed out of ditches. You know, they're massive. They will be hydrogen powered. You know, batteries aren't going to cut it for them. So there's that recovery industry is also in a you know in a state of flux, um, and there's lots of things happening there. It's interesting that synthetic fuel, huge investment into uh, Formula One at the moment that's interesting and that, i think that's one to watch if all that investment is going into formula one how is that gonna you know dribble down into you know mass market <laughs> dribble <laughs> not dribble <laughs> it's the toilet it's that chemical stuff that you drink. it's that stuff you drink <laughs> honestly I, I need to go and rinse my mouth thank can we have another question? Dri dribbling down. Huh. Well, before we move on on the electric motor, I was looking at one of the, you know, no names, no pack drill at the show, uh, one of these big quarter of a million pound jobs that are parked. And I looked in the back um, uh, and they had lead acid batteries, not lithium iron. Now, back to the solar panels, uh, you know, me and the tech and all the rest of it. You know, I've got lithium iron, which are much more efficient and store more. Yet here in motorhomes, where you, you, they, 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 they're marketing it as green and charging a, a quarter of a bar for the for the motorhome, it's old-fashioned lead acid, which are not that efficient and very heavy. So it's a bit of catching up to do. Could be that could be just temporary for the show, though. That I, I can't imagine that you wouldn't have a lead acid in the living area. You need to be having AGM, EFB, yeah. or lithium iron. Yeah, AGM, EFB. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> we did a podcast on it. Yeah, oh, cool, yeah of course we did. Marcel, thanks. Uh, keep listening. It's uh, fast moving. Uh, Avril Carson has uh, written a question. Cover or no cover over winter? Yeah. I'm presuming she's talking about her motorhome and not her bed. Yeah, I'm, she's definitely talking about or a caravan. So this has been a topic today. I was actually approached by one of the cover manufacturers today and said, Matt, what's your view on motorhome covers? I thought, gosh, here we go. And I, use, I will confess, I used to be against them. I was not a fan. I, I subscribe to the view that they scratch them, cause damp, cause moisture inside. I have to say, I have changed my view 
and we do fit a cover on two hours. Uh, there are brands, lots of brands out there that make them. Uh, we sell them in our shop and they are very breathable. The inside of them is very soft, as is a metal van conversion. It's never been scratched. So we do fit one, but I think there's, you know, it's a bit like toilet chemical. It's personal preference, personal taste. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I've seen the covers. We've interviewed a couple of people about the covers. They're really well designed. Uh, it's a good investment. And why not? Am, am, I, am I thinking the wrong thing? Well, I think it used to be the view, or it is the view, that they cause damp in a motorhome. I think the technology's moved on, and they are very breathable. I think you know, getting a good cover is important, um, and getting one that's soft on the inside like you, Keith, as we said before. <laughs> <laughs> At least I might be soft on the inside, but I'm not full of old toilet water. Uh, so have we got another one? You're soft on the outside as well. That's the last one. Isn't it? Was that the last one that you yeah. played in? OK, yeah. then here's another one I've got for you. Let's actually, there's two and they're linked. Why don't they have motorhomes with no showers, says Kathleen. Yeah. Dirty Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. All right, steady. Why do, uh, well, I've been asked that before. I mean, lots of people consider a shower a waste of space. I think the reality is for a motorhome manufacturer, they're building a home and our homes have bathrooms. So it's, it's the vast majority of people want a bathroom and actually it's fairly straightforward to fit a shower. It's a really handy storage space if you're not going to use it as a shower. So why? Because I think the vast majority of people that want a motorhome or a caravan and buy them they will use a shower. I mean, yeah, most people use the campsites, but increasingly there is a trend for camping off-grid and not going onto a campsite, and a shower then becomes very useful. The thing is, Kathleen, the showers, they can be quite snug, can't they? And if I was in a motorhome shower, it would be like a pig in a jam jar. Well, then you would have bought the wrong motorhome or caravan, I'd say. Kerry Casey has taken this one on as well. How many people actually use their motorhome shower, she says? <laughs> That's a great question, Kerry. I don't know. Do you want to start asking everyone? That's, I, I've no idea. I, honest, I, would, I don't know. I've Googled that one. There's no answer. <laughs> that is a really good question. I don't know. Maybe half of us. I think it depends. I think in this country, lots of us are on campsites. We don't have airs. There's been another big topic. So these campsites that aren't campsites, you know, they're stopover places overnight. And then a shower is really useful. But in the, in the UK, they're not prolific. Um, on the continent, they are. And so I think it, for people who are using their motorhome on the continent or outside the UK, then a shower is probably used more often than here. OK, well, that's all the questions uh, so far that we've got through. We've got some more to uh, answer in a forthcoming podcast. As we record this, it's Friday night, about 20 minutes before the show closes. You've got a busy weekend ahead of you, motorhome, Matt. Yeah, we have. The show is sold out Saturday and Sunday. So if you're coming along, make sure you've pre-bought a ticket. Um, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be really good. We're, what's known as buggy wars through the corridors. Uh, it's going to be lots of families uh, being the weekend, uh, and I'm sure lots of people who've never been to the show before, which is going to be exciting. Okay, then. So you're all ready for the weekend? That's all the questions we're going to answer for tonight. I think we're done and dusted. How are you feeling, by the way? By the way, after your chemicals. After my chemical, yeah, they're wearing off now, I think. <laughs> I'm risking and blowing bubbles for the next couple of hours out of every, well, every hole. <laughs> <laughs> what more can I say? That's the Motorhome Matt podcast brought to you with thatleisureshop.com. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. So find out more at our website. Just visit motorhomemat.co.uk and there you will find where you can listen to us. You'll also find us on YouTube, just Motorhome Matt.